Our last speaker is Pete Snyder. Uh, Mr. Snyder is the former chief executive officer of New Media Strategies, a social media marketing agency that he started in 1999. Uh, Mr. Snyder stepped down as CEO of New Media Strategies in 2011 and founded the investment firm Disruptor Capital the following year. Mr. Snyder graduated from Lincoln Mary in 1994, where he majored in government, and he was appointed to the college's board of visitors in 2011. He's currently a candidate for the Republican nomination for lieutenant governor. Can anyone, can everyone hear me if I speak from up here? I think we're talking today about a healthy tension, okay? And I would argue there's a healthy tension in my dress code. <laughs> now, my mom taught me if I'm going to speak at things to dress better than this. Additionally, because I spent the hour prior to this seminar or this, uh, this panel, standing on top of a hot barbecue smoker, my mom also taught me not to burn my dress pants. <laughs> so I think we're, you know, it, and it's very fitting to be at my beloved alma mater and in Williamsburg when we're talking about a healthy tension of past and future. And you can look at the rich history that the college has, and we talk all about our our presidential alums, and we could say, are our best days behind us? Did we build that four-foot wall around campus to keep the rest of the world out? Or are we a community firmly grounded in our traditions, but constantly looking forward? And that's the same thing you look at Colonial Williamsburg. You could say, oh my gosh, this is a bunch of glass makers and candle makers in Colonial Williamsburg, and gee whiz, this is all about the past. Or you could look at Williamsburg, as I do, as it was the Silicon Valley of its time. It was a hotbed of entrepreneurs and futurists who came up with the single greatest business plan in the history of the world, the blueprint for the United States of America. It's a healthy tension in talking about past and future. And I'm going to speak today, and actually I'm here much more to listen, to listen to what the panelists talked about, to listen to some of the questions. Uh, I'm here as an alum and also as a Board of Visitor member. I do not pretend to speak for the alumni body, and I do not pretend, and please do not misinterpret anything I'm saying for speaking on behalf of either the Board or the Administration. But I will speak in some headlines, which is, first and foremost, the Board of Visitors is acutely aware of this curriculum study that's going on, uh, is acutely aware and, I would argue, very well grounded in the commitment to academic excellence, to a preservation of our history and tradition, and certainly to having good governance of the college. Now more than, I've, I've been on the board for two years, uh, and this is a board that is night and day different from where it was about two years ago, uh, and is very much business-minded and results-oriented. So the board is certainly watching this review. I believe as a board member, and I would, I would argue the entire board believes it is too early to make any real judgment on what's happening out there. There's a process to things, and I think the faculty needs to be able to come back with what the faculty comes back with. And uh, I know that both the president of the college and the provost of the college are acutely aware of and watching uh, this review process. Uh, and I'm certain through direct conversations with our current rector and also our future rector that uh, any real deviation from the deep traditions and academic excellence of William & Mary won't be tolerated. So, you know, I think we do need to be able to, if we're looking at, as I understand it, about a quarter of overall credit hours that this review is looking at, uh, is there, should there be an opportunity to modernize? Absolutely. I'm, I'm certain there's some, some things that can change and some things that could be improved upon. Do we want to get away from set and the critical thinking skills that Andrew so eloquently spoke upon? Absolutely not. 
So that's the status as, as I see it as a board member. We will be watching this, I think, as, as uh, uh, Matt suggested, any real change that would come to play, I think at earliest would be in academic year 2014. So there's a lot of time on the clock if this were a football game. We're probably in the first quarter right now. Uh, and there are a lot of people that need to be able to weigh in on, uh, on this process. So that's, the, that's the, the world as I see it as it relates to curriculum review. I will speak in a macro sense about where I think the college is right now. And I don't know if you've followed some of the debate at the college. The Board of Visitors just uh, passed a, a new William & Mary Promise, which is a guaranteed four-year uh, tuition guarantee. That, that price will change. Uh, and, and additionally looked at a more self-sustainable business model for the college. I voted against that. But I found a lot of very good things in that program. And I think I'm more optimistic than ever that we have a college that's going to be self-sustaining in the future, less reliant on Richmond and the whims of politics to dictate, dictate the overall health of the school. Uh, you have a board that wants the college to be very bold one thing that I found in joining the board, there's a lot of weak speak in William and Mary. Uh, well, we're, you know, want to be one of the possible best liberal arts, maybe top 30, 25, what have you. We're really going to go for the top or we're not. And you have a board that is very much focused on academic excellence and doing everything we can to not just qualitatively feel good about the college, but quantitatively show results. Uh, this is a business-minded, results-oriented board. Uh, I'm very excited about our new rector. I think our current rector has done a very good job. Our new rector, uh, which I'm sure you'll be hearing from in the coming months, uh, can help lift this college to a new level. And I want to also applaud the administration for a lot of the, the good steps they've been taking of late. So, I tend to be a pessimist at heart sometimes. I'm wildly optimistic about the future of the college and, and what we're going to be able to do. We do need to make sure that we're keeping a very keen eye on the curriculum we do and making sure all of the wonderful things that, that produce well-rounded, very uh, keenly educated, articulate students and good writers remains. I like what Andrew said about the best focus group probably is a 35-year-old alum who's actually working in, in industry and can see what the marketplace demands, what the marketplace wants. As a business owner, I always watch that. So um, I look forward to your questions and appreciate the opportunity to speak with you today.